Hey there. Hey, how are you? Oh, wait, sorry. My audio is not playing out of the correct. Can you hear me or no? Hmm. I cannot hear you. That's oh, weird. yeah. Oh, wait. Can you hear me now? Yeah. And you can hear me okay? Okay. Okay. Sometimes my okay sounds good. Perfect. Yep. So what's new? Uh, not much. Just kind of um, been mm -hmm. been doing some, just focusing on some content, um, and then just kind of going through those Jack Westing questions that I got wrong and kind of um, filtering them out. I figured. I was going to try, I figured we could maybe do cars today, like maybe spend like an hour, um, like going through a passage and then 30 minutes, like maybe like a effective strategy to like review it. Uh, I think, I don't know if it was you or someone else had mentioned blind review or effective yeah. strategies to kind of review. And then maybe next session, I'll try to schedule it earlier where I can go through all three of the uh, Jack Weston and really filter out the questions that are difficult for me. Yeah. So the blind review, I, I have that as something that you do after you take, you know, your practice tests. Um, and, and what about like, uh, what I'm doing these daily cars passages are like, you know, I try to do them daily, but like, as far as just kind of reviewing them, like the like effective way to review is, is it just, is there a certain way to go about that or? Uh, yeah, you could, um, you know, read the solution and, you know, see if, if you know, the answer explanation makes sense. Um, and so for cars, you're doing AMC and Jack Weston. Yeah. Mostly Jack Weston. Uh, uh, yes. Mostly Jack West. No, no, sorry. I, I, I have, I just, been, I've been fine. I haven't been, uh -huh. I've been bad about doing my cars passes lately, but it, it's only been so far the d double AMC. I see. I see. Got yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. So you could use the, Jack Weston Chrome extension to for it to, to display better answers to like explanations. But yeah, you could do it that way. And you know, whatever stuff still don't doesn't make sense, we can go over together and we can make the map together and we can compare that the map that we make together to the map that you made and compare the main idea that we got together from the main idea that you got. So that's uh, usually um, a good way for going over cars. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, I, I think last time when we did the cars, we didn't get to the, uh, oh, the, like the solutions. Maybe yeah. we could do uh, like just for maybe like uh -huh. 15 minutes to an hour, like going over the passage and then spending a little bit more time kind of reviewing yep. or like, like, yeah, I guess, um, and maybe I can just kind of apply that when I try to when I get when I can start to do more daily passages. What, what, what are your thoughts? I don't know. Are, are are you saying that you want to do the questions from the passage that we didn't get to do the questions for last time, or do you maybe, want? To... Yep. Maybe just start fresh. I guess. Um, what? So we could do a new passage together, but with the aim of finishing the questions as well yeah yeah we could do that because because i'm kind of curious to see how you mm -hmm. answer the questions and then maybe how you kind of review the questions but yep. i don't know if you think that's resourceful or yep, yep. we we were doing redoing a cars question pack volume one volume two which was it uh we were doing um oh you're doing the diagnostic tool yeah diagnostic tool yeah Got it. Yeah. Um. And do you do you have the Jack Wilson Chrome extension? Yes. This time I have it. Um. It should be just kind of. So, because you, you could open this up. Okay. With that and it looks better. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah. So Better's... go back. Yeah. Done practicing. Yeah. It just no one's in the office right now, so I'm just gonna. You can still hear me, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, good. All right. This is much better without the headphones. It's weird yeah. when I when I can't like hear myself. But yeah, yeah. All right. So done practicing. Okay. 
And then, okay, uh, just hit practice here, I'm assuming, and then come here. Uh -huh. Oh, no, JW, okay. Okay. So, let's see. Let's see if you could maybe scroll down a bit to see if we can get the entire passage in view. Oh, am I? Hold on. Am I? You could scroll up a little bit and see, like, let's see if we can fit the entire, you know. Oh, that's what you're saying. Okay. Is yeah. it? Yeah, like that. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I can't, yeah, I can't. Uh... Oh, wait. Just lost it. Okay. Perfect. So, do you remember how we did this? Um, so I, 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 a little bit, like, I know there were, uh, you were kind of highlighting, um, sort of buzzwords and you had some kind of color code scheme, um, for this. And after kind of each sentence, so the, would, the buzzwords okay. are buzzwords are more so in the science passages, words that indicate to you that they're likely ask you questions on, uh, here though, we're trying to find arguments. Right. So when we look at any given sentence, we want to be able to classify it as either a new argument or a, or, or a same argument. Um, and if it's same argument, a lot of times it'll be like elab, like elaboration. Um, but yeah, I want you to read out loud slowly. And then after each sentence or, you know, if it's a long sentence, you could do it during the sentence to tell me in your own words what's being said. And um and uh yeah arguments i'll uh, highlight in green um i don't highlight the elabs um if there's evidence for support i highlight that in orange and if we have a sentence that starts with a contrast word i highlight that in pink and the contrast word is important because it means that whatever comes before it will be the will be different from whatever comes after it. Um, and a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times, uh, the contrast word or what comes after it will kind of be like the author's what the author thinks. So, yeah. So yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just one quick question. Um. On tech, like, uh, and so I know you're saying like slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So, essentially, the iteration of it I would do on test day is obviously I wouldn't be I wouldn't be able to highlight different colors. It's just, but uh, as I am highlighting these kind of um, transition words and what so not transition words because transition words could be like and then or since then or after this right or or subsequently all those are transition words but transition words are just helping you transition from one thing to the next Co contrast words are what i want you to you know keep an eye out for in fact like like as you read it whenever you read a contrast word like just acknowledge it tell me like okay this is a contrast word because it means a lot like look so for instance if i say like okay um, Rahil is taking or studying MCAT, then, so then as a transition word, he can, you know, whatever, bring his score up. The then doesn't really give us any indication about what this is going to be. Now, contrast that with but, right, if I say Raheel is studying for the MCAT, but it means whatever comes after is not going to be what you think it's going to be, right? If you're studying something, you should expect your score to go up. But 
if it doesn't, then you can say the contrast word, meaning whatever comes before is different from whatever comes after. So, so yeah, not transition words, but contrast words and uh, not summaries. That's another thing. Um, so for instance, like yesterday, I went over a passage uh, from Jack Weston that was, uh, that talked about how, 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 Domestic violence in white communities, there's been a, you know, nationwide effort to bring awareness of that. And the effort included um, measures of like we are of educating like the population saying that domestic violence doesn't only occur in minorities, but actually occurs in the white population as well. And so that was a that was like an example of something like that. But I, but anyway, so yeah, you can start. Uh, okay. Yep. Okay. And so like all the all those everything that you're highlighting that we're gonna highlight on test day. I know you said maybe I won't be writing the summaries, which makes sense because maybe because of time. But will I actually be on test day? Will I be highlighting on test day all those things, those words, or? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, once we get to the phase two and phase three, where you take the practice tests, we can see, I mean, because that's going to be when you're doing everything under time conditions, right? So we'll see what we can tweak uh, at that point. Um, but for for me, I know, like, like, what I would do is I would like, start, like, start to jot down some stuff. But uh, in the process of like, maybe writing like three words, um, I would have it organized in my head already. Um, so you'll see that with, you know, a you know, continual, you know, practice of this stuff. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. So um, the scientist trying to understand human diversity has to deal with the problem of short term adaptation or Acclimat acclimat acclimatization and long-term adaptations related to survival in a particular environment. What do they mean by climatization? It almost seems like a, is it like a syn synonym to adaptation or? To any adaptation or? Uh, it sounds like a, I'm, I'm thinking like, well, I don't know if this is outside knowledge. I'm thinking like Darwinism or something. Like, no, no. Like, so, so when I say, so they mentioned two types of adaptation, right? Adaptations. Like they mentioned two types of adaptations, right? Oh, short term and long term adaptations. So, oh. climatization is what type? Oh, okay. It's it's short term. Yep. Okay. So I loved how you did that. Um because you immediately knew what I was asking. Like, what do they mean by acclimatization? You said you saw it as a synonym for the adaptation part, which is perfect, but it would have been, or it's close to perfect, but it would have been perfect if you mentioned the short term part because the long-term adaptations don't seem to be called acclimatization, right? So, but you did that like perfectly, like 99% perfect, but yeah, good, 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 good job. So cool. So, okay. So I see now why this is helping you because, because like when I read this, I'm assuming a lot of cars people, it's just like, I read it and I'm just going into like passive mode. And so yeah. like, like, okay, okay. I'm seeing now what you're saying. Yeah, that's a, that. Yeah, so that's that's another thing. Like, yeah, because these are not summaries that we're writing. We're writing out arguments. Um, so it's it's not going to be like, you know, this isn't like an like a textbook or, you know, anything you know, like objectively true. But um, okay, cool. So yeah, what's that saying basically? Um, so basically, there's like two types of uh, like an. an in trying to understand um, this uh, diversity, like all the, gen the genetic diversity 
there's there, there's short term and long term uh, adap uh, adaptations. And what are the adaptations like for? Uh, I guess like, is it for survival like in the environment? Oh yeah, oh, yeah survival in the environment. Yeah. In the particular environments. Good. Okay. Continue. We know that individuals possess enough plasticity to adapt to new conditions in the short run. For example, tanning and high light conditions. So we now just have an example of the short term, which is, you know, tanning. So they're giving us like good evidence kind of thing. Like it's uh, seems like like factual evidence, not just kind of theoretical stuff or yeah, I mean it's a decent evidence. I mean, it's really just an example. Okay. Um like yeah, a, a better example would be like, you know, uh a quote. Like the according to this scientist. Tanning, is, and then we have a quote from it or something. Like, so either a quote or something like reference to authority, RTA, which is like, all right, this scientist says this, and in this, this is the resource, like it was in this paper, or this is a quote from it. But, uh, but yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. However, this plasticity is very different from the ad adaptive capacity of individuals living in an environment over a long period of time. Okay. Any special words here? Uh, however. Excellent. Do you call that a contrast word or what That's do you call it? That's okay. Okay. So, um, cause you know, like, I don't know if you heard this, but you know, like there's like a saying or something when someone says, like, let's say I'm saying good things about someone and then I, and then that person's like, but, because then after the but will be like the not so good things. So now I did not. Uh, so there's now now after this contrast word. OK, so prior to the contrast word, we talked about plasticity that helps in the short run. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we have our contrast word. So we know that what comes after, even if we didn't read what came after, what comes after would either say something like uh, about the plasticity uh, for the long run, right? Because we're saying, okay, people have enough plasticity to adapt in the short run. However, contrast word, this plasticity is very different from the adaptive capacity of individuals living in an environment over a long period of time. So the plasticity is associated with the short term adaptations, but not for the long term ones, right? So I'll say like plasticity different for the long, long, long one. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now what can we write for our map? Um, there is a short term and long term adaptations. Uh, no. Um, so you want to be a little bit more less objective. Basically, like you don't want to, yeah. So, because for instance, if the if the author says, "Hey, there's long term and short term," right? That's not going to be an argument, right? Like there's short term and long term. Like, sure. Of course, right? But uh but 
we want to look for arguments. So the arguments here are say like what's the argument saying? Um, short term, uh, long term adaptations are different from short term, and uh, so how how so? Uh, the the plas plastic plasticity plasticity varies in short versus long. Uh, but not tell me how that how that varies. Um, so like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, instead of saying plasticity varies in short term and long term, mm -hmm. that doesn't really give us information, oh, right? Be more specific, like 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 time. Like I would say, I would add the time part piece of it. No. No, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. So the plasticity is associated with only one of those things. Like the plasticity is for the short term, right? Because it says plasticity to adapt to new conditions in the short run. Uh -huh. And then it says contrast word. So we know that we're not going to be talking about plasticity anymore we're not going to be talking about short run anymore so they're saying however this plasticity which is the one that was just mentioned is different from whatever allows a long-term adaptation to take place so so for instance what i wrote was is short-term Plasticity, for example, tanning, is different from long-term adaptations. Now compare it to this. If I if we had written um so I think the one on the right is closer to what you're saying. So that says there are short and long-term adaptations with varied plasticity, but we want to ask, okay, how is the plasticity varied, right? Is it like more plasticity means more long-term adaptations or more plasticity means more short-term adaptations, right? So we know from the passage that plasticity is related to short-term, right? So we want to include that, but if we just do this type of like so-called summary on the right, it doesn't tell us much. It it's kind of like a vague kind of uh, and yeah, you don't want to necessarily summarize, and you don't want to be like distant. I'm all, I'm almost temp tempted to say like you don't want to be like, well, yeah. So it is do you, do you consider very a strong word? However, the specificity is very different from or, or is not just is that well, the varied part is just vague, right? Because what the passage is saying, so here let me show you. So, so plasticity is something that enables you to adapt to new conditions in the short run, right? But this plasticity is different for a long-term adaptation. So rather than saying it's varied, I could say that it's only for the short run, right? It's like if I was asking you, okay, you know, what, how, how, how did you do on your uh MCAT practice tests and you tell me it varies that doesn't help much right where whereas if you said it varies from like a 505 to a 507 you see how the difference there mm -hmm. so like we want to know like more information right so varied is just because we don't if you just say varied we don't know 
if plasticity is 50 50 well it can't be 50 50 if it's varied but we don't know if 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 it's short run that it has more plasticity or long run which has more plasticity so uh so that's why what i wrote was short term is the plasticity part and i included the example of tanning and that's different from the long term adaptations okay That kind of makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. In humans, as well as other animals, climatic adaptations involve at least four different mechanisms genetic changes, growth changes, physiological changes, and behavioral changes. Okay. Now, anytime they give you like, a numbered list we want to pay attention to each like item in that numbered list that's different from if they just said different mechanisms then it's not really that we don't have to be that uh you know thorough i guess but since there's giving us a numerical value then you know we want to know that there's genetic growth, physiological, and uh, behavioral. So, and, you know, we don't know specifically what the stuff means, but likely they will elaborate on it. So you can, yeah, you can continue. Got it. And there, are they like, it seems like right now they're kind of equating humans and animals kind of similarly, like they're, they're not trying to differentiate them or like that, or is that, that's not relevant, right? Sorry. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. So, so they're saying, yeah, humans as well as other animals. So wait, sorry. What was your question? Sorry. Uh, it, like it sounds like they're just trying to equate humans and animals. Like kind of, they're not trying to differentiate them. They're saying humans and animals. Maybe they they, they might have potentially similar sort of, or maybe I'm reading too much into this. No. Uh, well, like you know, we are still animals, right? Yeah. Yeah. But but according to what they're saying is as well as among other animals, it says other. Like if it said, in humans, as well as among animals, then that's implying that humans are not these animals. Oh, okay. Okay. But since it said other animals, that must mean that humans are, you know, being thought of as animals. Okay. So it's a presupposition with the word other. It's funny because like I was like reading parts of like the Bible and how one of the parts is like, you know, you should not worship other gods. Um, and I was just thinking like that presupposes that other gods like exist, you know, it, because of the word other, um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. So you see what I mean with like the other versus without the other. Yeah. Got it. So, so, uh, Genetic changes are the slowest of the group, while behavioral changes are normally the most rapid. Good. So now let's say, you know, we're going to eventually write this in our map, obviously, but for instance, we don't want to say genetic changes are different from behavioral changes. We want to say how they're different, right? So, yeah. Okay, good. Continue. Genetic changes are intergenerational changes which occur between successive generations of a population. Okay, it's, it almost seems like this is telling us, kind of telling us why genetic changes are slower because it's inter intergenerational changes. Yeah, what does that mean, by the way, intergenerational? 
intergenerational. And so I'm thinking, okay, what is inter versus intragenerational? Mm -hmm. um, successive. I don't know. Uh, is it like so? Yeah, I think want something? I don't know. You're thinking of inter versus intra. So tell me, like, what the difference is between inter and intra. Uh, now I have to try. To, I'm trying to think about. I'm trying to use like uh -huh. recall from intramolecular and intermolecular correct or, <laughs> um, Yeah, it's I don't know. Like maybe with like like. But I don't actually know. So tell me, like in chemistry, what the difference is between inter, like let's say intermolecular forces and intramolecular or intermolecular bonds, intramolecular bonds. Um, I'm trying to think, is it like is it inter? Is that kind of like London dispersion forces and Van der Waal forces? Like, like it's it's more so like. Like, like, okay, maybe that's not a good sign. Like, maybe like NaCl, it's between that ionic bond in between those two, as opposed to like NaCl, like in water, like it, like. So, no, that's not. Uh, what do they draw here? Uh, you you, you draw uh two water molecules, and then there's like a a polar attraction, or like a yeah a a hydrogen bond. Uh, Hydrogen bond, yeah, sorry, yeah, hydrogen bond, yeah. Okay, so what was that first thing you said? Uh, was it London dispersion forces or Van der Waals? Uh, oh no, when I asked you about this. Oh, uh, intra the difference between intramolecular and intermolecular. Oh no, um, so like, so describe the drawing that I made again. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, two uh, two waters like two, two uh, and there is like there's like a two uh, water. Two water what? Uh, hydrogen bonding, polar attraction, like like. Right. Uh, you said that there's two water. You said that there's two water, right? Correct. Correct. So two what of water? Oh, sorry. Uh, two molecules of water. Good. Okay. So if it's between two molecules, this must be intermolecular. Between molecules, right? Okay. Now, intra would be within a molecule. So that would be like the oxygen bound to the hydrogens. Well, I don't mean this. I mean like the actual lines. So like, okay, so one water molecule looks like this. And the hydrogens are attached to the oxygen within that molecule. And so examples of intramolecular bonds would be like an ionic bond or a covalent bond. And we typically draw intramolecular, sorry. Did I say, in I think I messed up what I just said. So. So intramolecular bonds would be like covalent bonds, ionic bonds. And those are, we we denote that with lines, like lines as the, as the bonds. But intermolecular bonds between molecules, we don't, we use either like a dotted line or some type of thing that I drew here over there. So, so yeah, so. So, so inter, so inter, I'm oh, sorry, intra, like TRA, yep. that's smaller scale, and then inter is larger scale, kind of? Uh, no, no, so, so. If I have reversed. Uh, the intra prefix just means, <laughs> means within. And the inter prefix just means between. So intramolecular is or intramolecular bonds are bonds within the molecule and intermolecular bonds are the bonds between the molecules. And if we now apply that 
to generational, right? Intragenerational, would that be within a generation or between generations? Uh, within or intra. Intra would be uh, within generations. Good. And then inter would be between generations. Correct. So it, it sounds almost like intra would be, I-N-T-R-A would be like shorter term and inter would be maybe longer term or no, maybe that's, I'm just stretching it too far, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's, that's something that can happen like yeah. that could, you know, be there for the uh, generational thing, but, but. What I really wanted to show was just that. So I like that you thought about intra and intra molecular bonds. Um, but, um, you know, I always say this about words and language and stuff like that. Like, you don't have to know a dictionary definition of a word to figure out what it could mean. So if we go back to what, you know, what's meant by intra and inter, in terms of these bonds, we can then figure out what intergenerational is compared to like intragenerational. So words are always going to be very like useful, uh, not necessarily just memorizing what intergenerational and intragenerational is, but to be able to figure it out. So, all right, cool. So. So yeah, so they said that genetic changes are the slowest and that they're intergenerational. So yeah, intergenerational must be slow. Good. Uh, growth changes refer to ontogenetic changes. For example, relatively irreversible changes occurring within an individual's lifetime. All right, now what? Okay, and we have a new term, right? Ontogenetic, and that seems like it's relatively irreversible, right? But if it's, you know, irreversible, okay, sure, ir irreversible, but within an individual's lifetime, right? Right. Um, physiological changes are, for the most part, reversible. Okay. Continue. Okay. Uh, an example of this would be the menstrual disorders experienced by females who move from low to high altitudes and back to low altitudes. Okay, so we could say this is an example, menstrual disorders, low to high altitudes, you know, back to low altitudes. Um, okay, what can we now put for this paragraph? Um, genetic changes, genetic changes, slow physiological changes, fast. Um, oh, I guess I should be more specific because like, should I include the examples that you? Sorry, like, tell me again what you just said. Oh, sorry. Uh, the, the genetic changes are slow, i.e. Uh, successive generations versus physiological changes fast, i.e. menstruation in females. Where did you see that physiological changes are fast? Uh, physiological changes are from, okay, they are reverse. Um, oh, I guess it's, okay, maybe I'm just, oh, I, I guess because like I, I was, I kind of, maybe this is a bad sort of inference, but like because if they're, if they're going from a low to high altitude, I just kind of gather that like maybe they just go up the mountain and then go back low to the mountain that like it's a faster change and then 
they were saying that um, yeah, and then I and then gen, they were saying genetic changes were the slowest, so I assumed physiological has to be faster. But okay, but maybe you're right; it doesn't have to necessarily be fast. But I guess I I gather from this that it was fast from from here, from going from the low to high altitudes. Yeah, so I get that. So they're saying that genetic changes are the slowest. And so um, you were talking about the, the physio, right? So yeah, and then, so if gen genetic is the slowest, physio must be faster than the genetic. Sure, we can make that uh, inference, but it doesn't mean necessarily that, that the physiological changes are fast right? It's just that it's faster than the genetic changes. Now, so each of these four mechanisms, they talk a bit about, right? But we see where it says genetic changes are the slowest. Mm -hmm. What does it say after? Uh, while, I don't know, if that's like a where that, but while uh, behavioral changes are most rapid. Okay. So, yeah. So the only thing that they say in uh, that's fast is the behavioral changes, right? So. Okay, so that's too strong of a word to write. So to say that. Oh, which one? Uh, like, like, like when I was saying, that's just too strong a word to say. Physiological is fast. Um, yeah, I wouldn't even say it's too strong a word. It just it just isn't really something that's implied Got it. either. So, so, so basically we just are looking at the four mechanisms and what differentiates them. So genetic is slowest and intergenerational. Um, behavioral is the fastest. Um, growth is ontogenetic which means irreversible and within a lifetime life an individual's lifetime and then physiological are reversible and then we have an example of that so we've characterized each of the four different mechanisms based on what they're giving us i mean we don't know you know if like if we know that genetic is the slowest and intergener uh, sorry behavioral is the fastest within that there's nothing that tells us if it's you know the uh growth and physiological or physiological and growth right we don't know which one's faster but what we do know is that growth irreversible within lifetime and physiological are reversible so we want to take what they say about the differences between all these and not inject like our own kind of thoughts on it. So I wrote genetic slowest intergenerational behavioral is, uh, behavioral is the fastest um, growth in parentheses onto meaning ontogenetic, uh, you know, relatively uh, irreversible and within the lifetime and physio is reversible. And then we have the example of, of the menstrual thing with the altitude. Uh, okay. I interpret it's, I interpreted that wrong too, because so they said, okay, I get it now. So they said physiological is reversible. And then the example they're showing the reversal is a low to high altitude. But then I read that as uh, having to do with like, um, how fast it, I, so, okay. I, I misinterpreted that. Okay. Yeah. To make another like chemistry analogy, it's like, you know, you could have something in equilibrium in which the forward and reverse reactions are equal, right? Um, meaning that it's reversible, but does that tell you anything about the speed of the reaction? It doesn't, right? What does tell you about the speed of a reaction would be something like a catalyst that can increase the speed. So, but a chemical reaction on its own, whether it's only going forward or only going backwards or both forwards and backwards, aka reverse, uh, 
reversible still doesn't tell us about the speed. Right. Got it. Yep. So, yep. We want to just use what they gave us and yeah, nothing else. Got it. Got it. Our behavioral responses take on greater important greater importance than is the case with any other animal. Oh, it's just one sentence. Okay. Hey, what's the saying? Oh, what was that? Oh, oh so what is it? Yeah. What is uh, it? Humans are the like they're also like they're the really important or like Wait, what? Say it. Oh, no, 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 that doesn't make sense. It's, uh, no, I said humans are really important, but that's not a good interpretation. Uh, hey, how, how are you getting that? Our behavior, our behavioral responses take on greater importance than as a case of other, any, any other animal. Yeah. That, like, I'm thinking, like, humans, human behavior is more important than any other. Like species or animal? Uh, so be careful there because it's not... So this is just saying that like the behavior... So like out of the four mechanisms that we discussed, for us humans, the behavioral response takes on a greater importance compared to other animals for which, you know, um, you know, something like a genetic change could be the most important or, you know, a physiological change is the most important. It's just that for us, for humans, out of the four mechanisms, the one that's most important is behavioral, right? Okay. So... Because of our culturally patterned ways of dealing with environmental stresses, much of the behavior, although capable of rapid alteration, usually manifests itself in a quite stable pattern that are non-genetically, generationally transmitted. All right. So what are we saying here? Um, yeah. So this is a good example of a long sentence with lots of commas. So you can analyze this in part. So let's go up until the first comma and, you know, tell me what they're saying. Okay. Uh, because of our culturally pattern ways of dealing with environmental stresses, um, there's a pattern, like the humans have a pattern in kind of, when they say dealing, I'm thinking like adapting to environmental stresses humans have a way of like kind of yeah so in, in dealing with environmental stresses like kind of adapting to environmental stresses um what type of adapting behavioral adaptations behavioral uh adapting so they use a word in this Second sentence that. Oh, cultural adaptations? Yes, yes. Because, yes. yeah, when you first described it, you were saying patterns. But what we see here is it's culturally pattern, right? So, why is, I might be jumping the gun here, but why is it so important? Well, like, why is it, why for a human is behavioral so important? Um, because that could be, like, culture, right? And, like, prior to that, like, I guess, like, what I was trying to say with the sentence prior was it's not that the behavioral response for humans is more important than the behavioral response of other animals. It's not that. It's just that. If you ask a human what's the most important, they'll say behavioral. And like, let's say animals could talk, 
and you ask an animal what's the most important to you, they'll just say something other than behavioral. So it's like not, you know, objectively kind of comparing the two, but comparing like what each of the two think is the most important for them. Got it. So it's like if you have the four different mechanisms, mm -hmm. the individual might be like 60, 60 or 70 percent as opposed to other ones, maybe like. Yeah. OK. Yep. OK. For other animals, it could be like 30 percent. OK. So good, good, good. OK, so now, yeah, so we're talking about um, cultural culture um, and then they use kind of the behavior or, or they say much of the much of behavior. Although capable of rapid alteration, usually usually manifests itself in quite stable patterns that are non-genetically, generationally transmitted. Right. What uh, what could that mean? Non-genetically, generationally. transmitted yeah so the be <coughs> excuse me so the behavior is being transmitted but not through genetics mm -hmm. and it, yeah and so generationally transmitted what could that mean Would that be intragenetic, uh, gener sorry, intragenerational or inter? Uh, would it be inter, like w within the generation or? Well, wait, inter, is that within or between? Oh, sorry, so, uh, intra, sorry, intra, uh, TRA, intra. Yep. Within. So, oh, but, uh, well, if it's generationally transmitted, Think about, like, it goes from who to who. Uh, uh, like um, parents to their to their kids, right? That would be that would be ge generational transmission. That would be like TRA, like intra. Or... Well, remember, intra is within. Uh -huh. So intra generational. is within your generation. Intergenerational is between different generations. So parents and kids, when they, you know, whatever, interact, um, they're, since they're not within the same generation, they cannot be intragenerational. They must be intergenerational between generations. Okay. Right. So, okay. So, so behavior for us humans is the most important and because it could be culture um, and, you know, that can make it something that is, uh, you know, transmitted or, or passed down through the generations over time. Right. So, good. Okay. Um, this has to be proven highly efficient means of responding to the environmental stress, permitting ho permitting Homo sapiens to explore many possibilities for moving into new environments. Right. So this is like. evidence of why humans can kind of uh, go into different environments because of their rapid alteration to behavioral response. So, well, two things. So, um, well, So, okay, so this is just saying that this made it easier for uh, humans to be 
to uh, to be able to move into new environments. Um, but what you're saying is that the behavioral thing is, you know, more important and we do have that, but I think we want to, I mean, what I would add is just the culture part, but yeah. Oh wait, what the hell did I, where'd my map go for oh, uh, two? It was there a little, some time ago, I think. What the hell? Damn it. It's annoying. Okay, let's see what we wrote here. So, um, damn it. <laughs> okay, genetic, inter, gen, slowest, behavioral, fastest. Um, growth, onto, irreversible, and physio, reversible, i.e. menstrual, altitudes, I don't know why, whatever. Slightly cut off the butt. Oh, yeah, you... and I'm like, you know, it's it's because I I put a white block there, but I can't erase that white block anymore, so it's annoying. But whatever. So okay, uh, it just says menstrual at all uh, altitude there. So, uh, okay, okay. So let's go back to this. So, um, yes, behavioral, you know, greater importance. than other animals. And because of our culturally patterned ways of dealing with environmental stress, stresses, much of behavior, although capable of rapid alteration, usually manifests itself in quite stable patterns um, that are non-genetically generationally transmitted. And uh, this permits humans to you know, be able to travel and adapt to new environments. Um, for this reason, we inhabit a diverse array of environments, although uh, cultural, oh, sorry, although cultural adaptations have sometimes replaced generational, oh, sorry, genetic responses, the possibility of cultural adaptations to environmental stress has not been has not totally excluded genetic um, uh, adaptations. So, um, so maybe I'll just say like not excluding the genetic adaptations. So, okay, what can we put for this paragraph? Uh, uh, humans highly adaptive due to behavior. and much less genetic. Sorry, uh, say that again? Um, sorry, my mind may not be. Uh, uh, the humans. Uh, it's not your mic. It was just that I was right. I was oh. writing the map, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, 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 humans. Highly adaptive due mostly to behavior and to a lesser extent genetic. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, when you do this, you want to like start from the top of the paragraph. And what we say first is behave like 
behavioral response for humans is more important than that of other animals. And what we can also call this is culture, like a cultural pattern. And this enables humans to uh, pass things down non-genetically, but generationally. And can, and this helped us be successful in new in, in lots of new environments. And yeah, it's not, you know, totally excluding genetic adaptation. So I wrote humans, behavioral, most important compared to animals because cultural and non-genetic uh, non generationally passed on leads to success in new environments, includes genetic adaptation too. When you're writing these um, summaries, are you trying to take like a strong stance? Like, like, like you're trying to be very... Uh... I guess, like, because these authors have opinions, right? They have arguments, like you're saying. So, are you, is this kind of like perspective taking like a strong stance kind of thing? Or... Exactly. So, you know, what I could have done was. What I could have done was write, humans have different importance for the behavioral response compared to animals, and humans adapted to many new environments, and they use genetics and behavioral adaptations. Now, see how that is different from what we wrote, which is that instead of saying different importance, because if you said different importance, right? It could mean, it could also mean that animals have more important, like treat, treat it more importantly, right? Mm -hmm. Cause like, cause we know that the behavioral response is more important in a human compared to other animals. But if I just wrote that they have different importances, that could mean both, right? It can mean either humans it's more important for or animals it's more, more important for, right? But what I wrote was, for the humans, the behavioral is the most important. So, yeah, it's, you're taking more of a stance here because they're taking a stance. And that's, you know, our job is to figure out their stance, right? Um, and then where I wrote, use genetics and, you know, behavioral. Um, I guess I ended up just writing includes genet genetic adaptation too. But I kind of wrote it in a way that showed that uh you know that this can help them you know exp uh, adapt to new environments but yeah yeah you're going to take more of a stance just because they're taking more of a stance but yeah the human body comes in various shapes and sizes yep okay uh so uh, some variation is undoubtedly due to nutrition, but some is a response to long-standing adaptations of certain habits. Uh, yeah, habitats. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So that just kind of just noted. I don't need to like. Huh? Okay. I don't need to like do it. Yep. Just, say, okay. Um, two rules. So we have another numerical list, right? Ah, okay. Good. Okay. Uh, Bergman's rule formulated in 1847 and Allen's rule formulated in 1877 so 30 years later are often used to explain a diversity in body size and shape in animals. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, two guys, and yep, they probably they might have different theories about how mm -hmm. uh, 
this diversity you find in animals. Right. Um, yeah, size and shape. Okay. The cl the climatic factor in the case of both rules is cold or heat. Mm -hmm. Allen's rule, which deals with shape changes to achieve an optimal volume to surface ratio, states that extremities and appendages, ears, limbs, tails, fingers, and toes tend to be shorter in colder climates. Okay, makes sense. <coughs> Because they, the animals, sorry, because they expose less body surface and are closer to the body's core temperature, shorter extremities conserve heat. Okay. So, optimum volume to surface ratio. Um, what do you think is ha like if it's colder? Do you think you would have a higher volume to surface ratio or, or lower? Um, if it's colder, I would want like a lower volume to surface ratio. Like I wouldn't want to be like this. I'd want to be kind of you know shunting to my core, kind of. Would so. that be the so if you went like that? Does your surface area go up compared to like this? I think so, yeah. Like you would have more surface area if your hands were out. Uh huh. Yeah. So yeah. wouldn't that so what did so in a cold climate, did you say that say that you wanted a higher volume? Yeah. No, in a cold climate you want you want a lower. So you want to have like shorter, oh. shorter toes and shorter appendages and so uh, uh so wouldn't that cause a higher one because because what do you if you go like this you have a higher surface area compared to this right so if it's volume to surface uh ratio the surface area in the denominator if that goes up the overall volume to surface ratio would go down right oh it's an inverse proportional okay Exactly, exactly. Like you have the right idea in terms of like if you go like this, because if you go like this, you have more surface area. So your body can, you know, radiate heat. Whereas if you know you went like that, yeah, you know, you're kind of covering up and having less surface area, but the volume of your body like is, you know, not changing there. So yeah, yeah. So, okay, shorter extremities conserve heat. All right, good. Um, oh, yeah, and then you see it says, because they expose less body surface, right? So that means the surface area goes down, which means the volume to surface ratio goes up. But, yeah, good. Uh, longer extremities expose greater body surface area can offer additional surface for dissipating heat in warm climates. All right, it's the same. Okay. And, um, Berg, uh, uh, Bergman's rule. Oh, so, sorry. So, oh, so, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, we got, what was that? Oh, what is it saying? Yeah. Oh, it's just saying the. Uh, uh, so you in 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 in, in uh, warmer climates, uh, you do want to have um, yep. more surface area in order to kind of dissipate the heat, kind of, you know. And so, yeah. So yeah. exactly. So, um, perfect. Um, Bergman's rule uh, dealing with volume states that body size tends tends to be greater heavier in cold than in warm climates okay, okay. 
So he, it sounds like he's doing more. Okay, no, never mind. He's focusing more on body size. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, Bergman's rule maintained that in warmer climates, the individual is taller. Okay, and then in colder climates, the individual stock you're in shorter. Okay, it seems similar though, right? Because uh huh, like like as if you're t it seems like the same concepts, uh, almost similar. Like if you're taller, longer appendages, and then so you can kind of cool yourself. If you're colder, then you know. Lower um, volume to surface ratio. So. Yep. Bergman's rule describes a relationship between body volume and surface area. A low surface area to high body volume is efficient in heat retention. A high surface area and low, bo low body volume proportion is efficient in heat dissipation. So, so let's say okay, what can we say for this paragraph? Um uh. Humans have different shapes and sizes. Some is due to nutrition, some is due to climates. So remember, we don't want to be vague like that. We want to go right into, like, instead of saying, all right, there's two ways of doing things, and like, you know, in one way, They'll have different sized appendages in another way. They have different sized, you know, height. But you want to say, okay, what is the thing that causes the change in appendages and what, you know, climates and things? Um, Bergman and Allen say, I'm sorry, uh, 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 Allen says, Small small appendages keep you warm, and longer appendages keep you cool. And Bergman says, being tall keeps you cool, and being short keeps you warm. That's like, yeah. So we could say, according to Allen, shorter appendages in colder climates uh, to conserve heat, opposite for hot. Bergman, taller in hot, uh, shorter slash stocky in cold. I like that. Okay. Yep. And like, I'll also do like the alternative of, you know, just a summary. So that's more along the lines of both Bergman and Allen came up or rules involve size and shape change uh variation depending on climate so so if we just wrote both bergman and allen rules involve size and shape variation depending on climate it's it's like vague right it's like how does it do that right so we want to write down that if it's a hot climate, you're going to have this effect on the size and shape. 
if you have a cold climate, it'll have this effect on the size and shape, right? So we want to get to the actual argument part, right? So, yep. <clears throat> These rules were relatively unknown as explanatory vehicles of human diversity until 1950. Even now, no one argues that these rules can be strictly strictly applied to animal populations in all cases. However, there are possible explanatory models for various adaptate, adaptive traits. Okay, what can we put for this? Um, Bergman and Allen's rules, mostly unknown until 1950, and still can't be applied to all models for adaptation. Um, anything else, though? Um, and they, uh, Allen and Bergman could possibly explain the adaptation? Yeah. It could still work for certain things, right? So I put er error to the above. Theory is relatively unknown until 1950. Not perfect for all cases, but still useful. Okay. Right? So, good. So, um... You know, and if you, again, look at the highlights for any given pa uh, paragraph, you can see that it goes into, you know, the, uh, it, it's pretty much similar to what we have in the map. Um, and now we're going to look for arguments that are repeated. So we have the different types of adaptations and, yeah, what can we put for our main idea here? Um, this is like a one sentence type of thing, or, or, yep. Okay. And I should just try to, I, I should just try to get it from the, from the five paragraph sentences, or I try to like kind of, is that, is that how I should like approach the main idea, like getting it from the five sort of, yeah, you're going to look for arguments that are repeated in more than one paragraph. Okay. So, like, for instance, paragraph one, short-term plasticity is different from long-term. Paragraph two, we have all the different types. Paragraph three, the most important type for us, uh, and then paragraph four, the Bar the Bergman's and Allen's rules, and then the theory is relatively unknown until that, not, uh, but it's still useful. Now, um, so I could say, okay, two new environments due to cultural, behavioral uh, adaptation, and then I'll put like, you know, size slash shape dependent on climate, something like that. Like, I know I'm being vague there with depends on climate, but I only did that because I already explained in the map, like paragraph four, the relationship between, you know, size and shape and, and uh, temperature. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I'll just leave it like that. Um, so, okay. You could take a screenshot of like all the highlights, the map, even like the bad map on the right.
what is, uh, I'm more of a PC guy, but I have a, I'm sorry, I'm more of a Mac guy, but I have a PC guy. Is it Alt F12 or no? What's the screenshot thing? The... Okay. Uh, hit it the print screen button. Okay, print screen. See if that works. Oh, it didn't have like, so you could open the micro, like the snippet tool. Oh, I Or I can do it for you. Okay. I'll to... But you know the print screen button? If you open Yeah, it, if you press that once, it'll open up like uh, this thing where you can drag the thing. yeah. Not uh But I already okay. added it for you. I put it in the chat so you can just download that. Okay. But So, okay, let's try some of these. questions out yeah i'm sorry I, I know you wanted to get like the questions done so yeah so we can we can okay okay um okay so all right so am i like all right you can't see obviously you can't see my hand but oh okay that's okay okay is, is this called blind review no this is not this is just uh no just something uh what do you call the strategy or just yeah i don't know okay okay um given the information in the passage the climactic adaptations covered by Allen's and Bergman's rules would most likely be classified as, oh, I think it showed up again. Um, Oh, oh, are you trying to cover up the answer? Oh, okay, okay. I just, I think, uh, hold control and hit Z. Try hitting that a couple more times. Because I think you accidentally erased like everything. Yeah. Uh, huh. Uh oh. That's strange. Uh, why did that happen? Yeah, I'm hitting Control Z. Maybe try control Y. Okay, so let's have you, instead of just sharing this window, share your screen and then the screenshot that you took with the map, have it on the left so it, so we can we can use it. Oh, you already have the screen shared. Okay. So yeah, you can just put that somewhere on the left. Okay. 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 No, that's every time, like everything. So I'm trying to add things, but it just disappears right after I add it. Whatever I draw, it doesn't stick. That's weird. So yeah, we could bring it down. Or or quickly unshare your screen and then share your screen again. Let's see. Oh, I see you now, like with your cursor. Oh yeah, okay, so it's working now, but yeah, let's bring that map out and you can put it somewhere on the left. It's like, so, hold on, let's see if I can, it's like, it's like covering the, I don't know, okay, okay, now it's working, okay, okay. Okay, I think it's working now. As far as like, okay. okay, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, given the information in the passages, the climactic adaptations covered by Allen's and Bergman's rules would most likely most likely be classified as. Um, so, am I, am, I, am I supposed to like interpret what the question is asking, or I just kind of, or just you just. Yeah, yeah. Like what yeah, what is it asking? And what do you think your answer could be?
Um, just like like how the pastor was talking about like the the four uh, the, like the four kind of ways humans kind of adapt. Which one is uh -huh. um, the one that would kind of that's like the, the primary underlying way of um, Allen and yeah. uh, uh, Bergman, and, and I would say uh, uh, we could even go uh, to to paragraph four map and say. Um, so what type of the four mechanisms that we talked about does Allen and you know Bergman's rule fall under? Uh, looks like uh, the behavioral. So what was Allen's and behavior Bergman's rules? Um, they were like all oh, like like short appendages and and. and being taller versus shorter. Well, that sounds more like physiological, right? No, that's not, that's not physiological, sorry. That's more like genetic, right? Yeah, yeah, genetic, sorry. Yeah, genetic, genetic. Good, good, good. Um, so, so I think there, like if you were thinking behavioral first, um, it would be worth it to go back and see what Bergman and Allen's rules are about. And, you know, think about it that way um because like you know the uh changes in sizes and, and all that stuff isn't you know a behavioral thing it isn't like and it's not physiological because it's not reversible so yeah just be a little careful but yeah just uh give me that should i hit this one just go all right <laughs> Oh, yeah, we can just move, move on to the next one. Yep. According to the passage, human beings are capable, capable of inhabiting diverse environments, primarily due to... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I, I mean, without looking at the... The answers I'm thinking. Okay, yeah, I would. Uh, I would say um, human beings are capable of inhabiting diverse environments, primarily due to, I want to say, uh, behavioral change. Without even looking at just from my memory, but I can always go back to the passage. But yeah, I would say even from the main idea, right? It's the cultural behavioral, right? So, uh, D, genetically behavioral, genetically transmitted behavioral patterns. Wait, did you say genetically or generationally? Oh, sorry, sorry, generationally. I'm sorry. I missed that. Yeah. <coughs> Evidence that members of warm climate population have long upper extremities, but shorter, lower extremities mostly, most strongly suggest that. So they're kind of referencing Allen's and Bergman's rules, uh, uh, theories, sorry. Are they referencing both or? Um, I would say more so Allen's, because uh, Bergman is more about height, Allen's is more about appendages. Perfect. So we could get rid of D and D, right? You're correct. Okay. Uh, oh wait, I'm sorry. Wait. Okay, no. Warm climate patients have. Oh, wait, so it's so, uh. Wait, short, lower, but so in cold you want short extremities, but short, lower extremities. Evidence, sorry, um, evidence that most that the members of warm climate pop populations have long upper extremities, but short. Oh yeah, so then oh it does not hold uniformly. Sorry, so it's like partially true. Yeah, right. 
you remember in paragraph five, they said that it's not perfect for all cases, but it's still useful. And so they, uh, and so we have like, so either Alan Jewell is straight up incorrect. If it's straight up incorrect, it's, it shouldn't happen like at all, but we know for the most part it happens. So does not hold true uniformly is better because, because, you know, it's not absolute. But if they're talking about Bergman's rule compared to that being correct, requires modification, requires modification is more, you know, neutral. Um, so, yeah, you always want those types of choices. Good job. According to the passage, one drawback of Allen's and Bergen's rule is that they, um, it seems like, I mean, without looking at the answers, I'm thinking like they couldn't be applied to all mm -hmm. um, theories. Um, so, like, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to decide between B or C, but it doesn't feel like. What did you just say? Oh, uh, I just said that uh, they. What did I what did I just say? I just said that um they weren't they, they weren't known until like oh they couldn't be applied to all theories. Sorry, they couldn't be applied to all theories. So I would say cannot be applied to all cases. Yep, yep. So yeah. you, but when you come up with your own answer like that, and then you see the choices, you're gonna be looking for that answer. So it makes you less susceptible to the wrong ones. So yeah. So I wanted to ask, so I asked you, you know, what did you say just to be like, because you said yourself that they can't be applied in all cases, but then when you saw it, you were still stuck between that and C, but you know, you already had the answer. So that's what you would find, find for, right? Uh, find, found out, find out about. Yeah. Yeah. And also C uh were little known before 1950 a little subtle thing here right now they're asking for what a drawback of the rules right but is it a drawback of the rules that other people don't know about it until 1950 that's not really like allen and berg that's not a, that's not a reason for allen and bergman's rule to be bad right it's not really like their fault, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's why C wouldn't be wouldn't be it. So, so in these answers, they can put like correct statements, but you also it, it, in cards you have to choose like the best the and the question that answers the question the best, right? Like yeah, exactly. Just, okay. Okay. Uh, they there could be lots of true statements, but uh, you want the one that yeah that answers the question. So. Because A is a true statement, right? C is a true statement. D with the explanatory, you know, whatever. Part, um, yeah, not sure about that, but, but yeah, yeah, you're right about that. So good job. <clears throat> Given the information in the passage, one could most reasonably conclude that perspiration due to environmental stress and it is an example of, okay, so this is like a physiological response. Yep. How do you Oh, okay. Uh, I feel like I'm just using outside knowledge, but I feel, uh, well, okay. Uh, I mean, they did talk about, uh, the female menstruation cycle in the high versus low altitude, but well, uh, what do they say? You know, the defining characteristic of the physiological change to be. Um, so you, you can look at our map. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Um, oh, it's reversible. Okay. Got it. So, okay. So Perspiration is reversible, right? Uh -huh. Okay. 
So th is this this is like one that is this? Are we using outside knowledge? Like, what, what, how do you class? You know how like cars diagnose? I, I didn't use a car diagnostic tool like the not that diagnostic tool, but like the. So when you said first that it's physiological, you were using outside knowledge, uh -huh. and that's when I said look at the map. And the map, so you're not supposed to use outside knowledge, you're supposed to use map, the map. Um, and the map says that physiological uh, adaptation or response is one that is reversible. And then you ask yourself, is perspiration due to environmental stress reversible? It is. Therefore, C could be our answer, right? So we're not using, so like, you may have used outside knowledge that would have helped in this only if you were lucky, but you shouldn't use outside knowledge because you want to. Um, and also when you use outside knowledge, you use your knowledge of like physiology and sweating is a part of that. But the reason that this was the answer is because not because of physiology, but because of it being reversible. So, you know, if they say something that, like, if they say, like, 2 plus 2 is 5, like, 2 plus 2 is 5. <laughs> so you want to always go by their definitions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. All of it. So awesome. Um. So, so yeah, so today, I guess the key takeaways are when you write your maps, you want to write, you know, the arguments, not the summary, right? But an argument. It would almost be like if you read, like, the summary of the plot of a movie, you get to see, like, everything that happens like objectively, I guess, but compare that to like, if you read like a review made by someone who saw the movie, the guy who makes the review is going to have a opinion, several opinions about many things regarding the movie. Um, that's what you want to be more focused on. You want to be for focused on, those opinions, those, you know, arguments and all of that stuff. So that means that, so when we make our map and we go write stuff for each paragraph, it's not summaries that we're writing. Um, and you get to see on the right where I wrote that other map, that's what you get if you just write the summary. And you can see how that is, like, instead of just saying that, this is a difference or something like that. You say, what is the difference? What about it? Right. So I think that's going to be something like being more specific like that and identifying the argument part is going to be the most useful for you to, to work on. Um, and yeah. What do you think? Oh, I think that's good. Um, I'll just I'll keep playing around with that. And I think I think for next session I'll try to get from all those sections find the the Jack Weston ones that I really want to review uh, from the from the content uh, test because I, I finished that one so oh you finished like all three yeah yeah I think we just touched on a little bit of chemistry but um, I uh, yeah uh, but I didn't I didn't uh, go through it to like filter out the ones that I really wanted to that I really want to you know. Um, review uh, that I don't understand after reviewing it myself so all right last thing what is intra and inter okay all right uh intra tra is within and inter is between good this will help me out with genicam too so yeah yeah like it's always there's no like I remember when you know well, they, I, they don't have vocab on the SAT anymore, but when it was a thing, like, I remember telling people, like, who would always be like, why do I need to learn all these? Or, like, why use this word if it means the other? Why can't you just use that? And I just tell them, like, you know, it's just an extremely valuable 
thing to learn that will pay dividends in the future for any of your other endeavors. So uh, the inter versus intra from this passage help, will help you out with all the other stuff, like the gen chem stuff and, you know, any other thing. Because, you know, let's say that a, something said intramuscular injection of some type of thing. Like, you know that that means, you know, you're injecting it within that muscle um, and, you know, stuff like that. So learning words like that uh, are always really, really useful. Um, so, yeah, awesome, awesome. So, okay, do you, you, are you going to use my Calendly for the next? Yes, yes, I will um, look at my schedule right now and then... Um... Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm just yeah. I'll, I'm gonna use it. Yeah, I've been using Canly mostly now for now but for you. And then right. once I get once I get finished my class, I'll try to do two like twice a week. Um, All right. Or, yeah. So okay, this is our. Oops. Should be one hundred and thirty-two. Should be getting that hopefully soon. I got it. Awesome. All right, then. So, yep, keep up the good work, and I will see you sometime next week. Perfect. Thank you so much, Adam. All right, Shane. Sorry, Shane. Sorry. Yep. All right. See ya.